Hey all, welcome to Circle of Tone, and today I have an opinion piece, and I thought I'd share some of my findings where I have been gone down the rabbit hole of buying a lot of plugins in the past, and why I stopped buying VST plugins. For those of you who don't know, very quickly, a plugin is something that you use for on your computer, you use it within the DAW to emulate things like this. So this is a base DI, Sansamp base DI. So you can buy a VST that will help emulate a base amp, help emulate a base pedal, and uh, a compressor, or an EQ, or even a console. So you know, you've, you've, some of you might have seen, say, the Dave Grohl Sonic Highways, and you know you can get Neve style uh, EQs and uh, channel strips and things like that. So it sounds great on paper, so why did I stop? Here are the top five reasons of why I stopped buying VST plugins. Number one, computer distortion. Software generated distortion generally sucks. We all know it, we all know it's, it's almost like a, an even worse version of solid state distortion where the average, if you've ever just put a guitar simulation or a, a distortion VST on anything like a vocal, if you've ever just put it on there, you never think, oh my God, that's amazing. There is something about DSP distortion that just doesn't sound good. And what most plugins are, and being general, okay, I'm not talking about delays or reverbs, things like that, I'm being general, Say you have a console v VST. It's going to be three main things. EQ, distortion, and compression. So those three things, okay? Now, in general, how really, ha how happy are you with compression that you use on a snare, a VST one? How happy are you with distortion? Say if you just want to put some tube distortion on a guitar with a VST. How satisfied have you ever been? How satisfied have you been with a, with a general, a basic EQ on VST? They don't really sound that good. So when every simulator is using a little mix of the, the distortion, the compression, it's very subtle when it comes to things like consoles, it never sounds any good. So when you have the basics of, of a, a software generated distortion, that is the whole basis of plugins. It's the way that a, say, tape overloads, you know? It's not a real tape. It's not like slamming a tape to get that distortion. It's using EQ and compression and digital distortion. Never sounds any good. So it sounds adequate at best, in my opinion. And I've tried practically everything out there. There's a few good ones, McDSP, um, Sound Toys. They're about, you know, they're still... Uh, but they're the best of, a, of a, a very average bunch. So that is the main basis of why I don't... It's just like a pod, you know? It's not real distortion. It's It has that pod thing to it. And the best... The reason I said sound toys, one of my favorite distortions is called the Devil Lock. And it's a compressor and a distortion. And the reason I like it is because it's a muffled distortion. Most of the, the DSP... Most of the V8 the VST distortions that I listen to have all the top end taken away because uh, it's unbearable. To have that fizz is unbearable. So sound toys are pretty smart and they do the, let's take all the high end out of the distortion. So it actually sounds pillowy and it never sounds that present. So, you know, you lose that uh, excitement that you get generated from outboard EQs and tube preamps and, and tube amps and things like that. You lose that natural dis chaos okay the eq is locked to a free you're locked into frequencies and they're predictable frequencies when you're going through something like a, a to preamp that preamp has more chaos in it you know you you it can do a few things that you wouldn't expect like a guitar tube will feed back at weird times you can't predict when it's going to feed back i mean you're not going to hold your your amp and let it sing, your guitar and let it sing in front of a VST distortion, you know? So it's little things like that. Okay, and number two, resale value. If I buy a piece of outboard gear, 
and chances are I can flip it for the same amount of price that I bought it for used. When it comes to VS VSTs, it's very hard to sell. So it can become a money pit. And I tend to have them stacking up. And in fact, I've, I've forgotten 80% of the things that I bought in the past because I never use them. So resale, generally 95% of everything is very hard to sell. And when you do sell it, you have penalties and things like that. Go and try selling your Waves uh, plugins to somebody. And that's, that's a quite a lot of fun. <laughs> so resell is another one. You're going to lose money. It's gone. So you better buy the, the good stuff. Otherwise, it's going to be money out the window. Number three, the constant sales. How many times have you bought a plugin and then all of a sudden it's Black Friday and that plugin is, you know, 90% off? Happens to me all the time. So to be honest, in the past, I generally only buy from sales because I am pretty, you know, stingy when it comes to gear. Number four, this one has hit me really hard, longevity issues. There's been a lot of things that I've used on my album that have gone out of business. Uh, one of them was uh, Camel Audio for things like synths and everything. They, they had gone out of business. There's The worst one is the advice, some of the worst advice I've given a company called Chrysonic, and they did really good sounding plugins for the price. You know, good as in adequate and, huh, that doesn't sound awful. But they were so sketchy and, you know, so they wouldn't respond to emails and then all of a sudden they wouldn't respond to even sales. So I can't even buy their plugins from them for the third time to activate in my old album. So I'm screwed. So I have to like re queue and everything, my, my, old, uh, my old album. It's insane. So that's another one. Watch out for longevity. Who knows if you will need to open up a project from two years ago and then all of a sudden, you know, you can't download the, the, those old VSTs. Hardware is going to be there. You'll have longevity issues with some of the vintage stuff, but you know, you can recap. Uh, it's not gonna, you know, it's, it's, it's solvable. And number five, this is the main reason of why I stopped. Lots of m classic producers have gone in the box, which means they no longer use the outboard gear. And almost, actually it is all of them, all of them. I haven't liked their modern recordings. Nothing is really, it, it has, I don't want to say vibe and warmth and all that nonsense. It just doesn't have anything. It's that distortion again, that the compression, the blah EQ, you know, there's no excitement. There's no chaos. It's also, it's music. It's like elevated music. I don't like what the, and some of these guys have worked with my father's band, Badfinger in the past and, classic beautiful sounding songs and now they're all about the uh, vsts and their new stuff sounds really bad it actually sounds bad it doesn't even sound like meh so yeah who is using these plugins extensively that is doing anything close to what was going on in the 70s 80s and early 90s you know who you know even bad bands like uh even new metal and, you know, not bad. They, like System of a Down sounds, you can't recreate that with VSTs, can you? Uh, number six. This is quite a, an important one where fixing it in the mix has become so lazy. What I obsess about, I get it right at the microphone. I don't want to EQ it later on or I, I, can't, I sometimes EQ it on the way in. And that's, uh, you know, you can't, there's no going back. You have to commit. So when you commit, you can, you, you obsess about it more. You're moving microphones, you, you know, you're putting up blankets in corners and things like that. A lot of people now will say, oh, I'll just get rid of that scratchy chicken high end with an EQ and VST EQ afterwards. Let's just get this done. It's, uh, production has become so, it's almost like muck distortion. It's muck producer, you like McDonald's and uh, the a lot of the art is gone where they can fix it in the mix and it's all about the performance the performance is key and uh, so if i need more less high end in my guitars i'll get a microphone that is a little bit more sh shelled in the top end you know because there and then you, you're eqing with microphones you, you can eq with with pickups you know you can eq uh just facing the cabinet a, a different way you don't have to 
uh, think it's almost it's it's you know it's adequate, and let's put some adequate VSTs on there to get rid of the adequate i high end. It all becomes vanilla sausage of boring, you know. So a lot of the art, a lot of the risk taking, you know, has gone because of the ease of VST software. And the final one, what would be on seven? Who knows? I mean, you know, you guys know I'm a pro. The final one is free plugins often sound 90% as good as the expensive ones. And some of them actually exceed it. And uh, if you want to know what good free software there is, uh, let me, you know, just comment and uh, I'll send you a few links. A lot of the big boys often have free software. Like I mentioned Sound Toys, which are one of my favorites. Uh, I have, you, if you just sign up to the newsletter, you'll get an email every so often saying, oh, the uh, little plate is free if you are a member. And little plate is a plate reverb. And plate reverb is like gold dust. There, there isn't many good ones. So if you, like Devil Lock was free, uh, little plate, uh, little radiator, uh, the altar boy, all these are really good plugins, but they're just limited to, uh, there's less options, but it gives you the meat. It gives you the, the main aspect of the plugin. A lot of plugins that come free with Reaper are amazing. A lot of plugins that come free with uh, the free door that I use. Uh, there's a video uh, link that I can click to where you can get free software that used to cost me 400 bucks. Um, and it comes with all the, the extended plugins that you have to pay for free. And that is the new Cakewalk. So yeah, the free plugins will get you most of the way there. Think about who is promoting the plugins. Then go and listen to the stuff that they've put out over the past five years. And listen, is it even any good? Have they have they become have they become lazy? Have they become, you know, let's just do it on my laptop on the plane? And you know, you got people sending them stuff for mastering and they just put it through plugins. Did you expect that? You know, you might have expect if you're giving it to some to one of the big boys, you might expect it to be going through, you know, the good stuff going to tape and all, all that stuff. So that's, you know, lots to consider. All right, so that's it. Lots of free software out there. There's lots of really good stuff. And I don't know that. I do know that. And to, to be honest though, there are a lot of drawbacks. Let me just show you one. We're doing it the way. I'll leave you with this. This is just an EQ. There is a video in the description where I want you to listen to this EQing a synth. It is an instrument in itself.
And I think you'll agree. If you listen to that clip that's in the description, you'll probably want to go grab one of these as well. And uh, I'm actually going to do a test on this. I'm going to use this. There's an old trick where you can boost a Marshall with an EQ pedal. I'm going to boost it with this bitch. <laughs> and that's part of the art, right? That's part of the, the risk taking. Am I going to use a VST to boost my Marshall? Nope. Can I use this beautiful little notch filter? Yeah. Put that down. Okay, chap. So if you like these types of vids, uh, please subscribe, hit that like. My channel's kind of in trouble, but you know, blah, blah. We also have a Facebook group, Circular Tone, and it is over a thousand strong. So come on in, share your music, share your tips, uh, you know, suggestions on what bands, and uh, if you know what bands used, let, let us know.